Homo sapiens share a common ancestor with Neanderthals, yet little is known about this ancient population. For the first time, researchers have utilized innovative digital tools to reproduce the cranium of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, last common ancestor. According to the findings, we split the human Neanderthal lineage roughly 300,000 years earlier than previously assumed. We know humans have a shared ancestor with the extinct Neanderthals, our closest prehistoric relatives. However, the identity of this old ancestor population is unknown because fossils from the Middle Pleistocene epoch, when the lineage split, are extremely sparse and fragmented. Researchers have now used digital morphometrics and statistical algorithms on cranial fossils from both species' evolutionary histories to rebuild in 3D the skull of Homo sapiens and Neanderthals for the first time. The virtual fossil was created by tracing 797 landmarks on the craniums of fossilized skulls dating back nearly 2 million years, including a 1.6 million-year-old Homo erectus fossil, Neanderthal crania discovered in Europe, and even 19th-century skulls. The landmarks on these samples provided an evolutionary framework from which researchers could forecast a timetable for our ancient predecessor's skull form, or morphology. They then inserted a digitally scanned current skull into the timeline, distorting it to fit the landmarks as they moved through time. This enabled researchers to determine how the morphology of both species may have converged in the last common ancestor's skull, during the Middle Pleistocene epoch which lasted between 800 and 100,000 years ago. The researchers created three distinct ancestral skull morphologies, each of which corresponds to a different estimated split period between the two lineages. They digitally recreated whole skulls and compared them to the few authentic Pleistocene fossils and bone fragments. This allowed the researchers to narrow down which virtual skull was the greatest fit for the ancestor we share with Neanderthals and when that last common ancestor was most likely to have existed. The study also discovered that, while this ancestral population was spread throughout Eurasia, the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and Sapiens was most likely born in or near Africa. According to previous estimations based on ancient DNA, the last common ancestor lived roughly 400,000 years ago. However, the virtual fossil Results show that the ancestral skull morphology closest to middle Pleistocene fossil fragments suggests a lineage split around 700,000 years ago, and that, while this ancestral population was also present across Eurasia, the last common ancestor most likely originated in Africa. We know humans had an ancestor with Neanderthals, but what did he or she look like? And how do we know the scarce fossil fragments we find are indeed from this ancestor population? These ambiguities give rise to many conflicts in human evolution. To deal with the faults in the fossil record, scientists sought to explore a novel solution, a combination of 3D digital tools and statistical estimating approaches. Using a simple and agreed tree of life for the genus Homo, they were able to forecast theoretically, and then digitally reproduce skull fossils of the last common ancestor of contemporary humans and Neanderthals. The virtual 3D ancestor skull exhibits early signs of both species. For example, it exhibits the beginnings of what would become the occipital bun in Neanderthals, the noticeable bulge at the back of the skull that contributed to the elongated appearance of a Neanderthal head. Yet, the simulated ancestor's face displays traces of the pronounced indentation that modern humans have beneath the cheekbones, which contributes to our more delicate facial characteristics. This area the maxilla, is pneumatized in Neanderthals, which means it was thicker bone due to more air pockets, allowing a Neanderthal's face to protrude. The virtual ancestor's heavy, thick-set brow is typical of the hominin lineage, highly comparable to early humans as well as Neanderthals, but lost in modern humans. The virtual fossil is more reminiscent of Neanderthals overall, which is not surprising given that Homo sapiens, the apex of human evolution, strays from the evolutionary track in terms of skull shape.
possibility of a faster rate of morphological change in the modern human lineage, suggested by the findings is consistent with periods of major demographic change and genetic drift, which are part of the history of a species that grew from a small population to the multi-planet species we are about to become. The population of our last common ancestors was most likely a subspecies of Homo heidelbergensis in its broadest meaning. This was a human species that lived between 700,000 and 300,000 years ago in Africa, Europe and Western Asia. The presence of this species in both Africa and Europe implies that he was a transcontinental Afro-European pioneer of early humanity, who was not limited by current geopolitical boundaries. In fact, scientists have begun work on a model of the last common ancestor of humans and chimps for their next project. Although the models are not perfect, in the absence of fossils, these new tools can be used to evaluate theories for any paleontological subject, whether it is about zebras, humans or dinosaurs. The researchers analyzed data from Neanderthal and Homo sapiens skulls to model what the two species' last common ancestor would have looked like. The findings could help scientists better understand the complexities of human evolution, by determining which early human species we descended from. The virtual 3D ancestor skull shows early Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens characteristics. For example, it reveals the beginnings of what would become the occipital bun in Neanderthals, the noticeable bulge at the back of the skull that contributed to the elongated appearance of a Neanderthal skull. An occipital bun is a conspicuous protrusion or extension of the occipital bone at the rear of the head, also known as an occipital spur or occipital knob. It is significant in scientific descriptions of Neanderthal crania. The occipital bun is an occipital bone protuberance, and is a characteristic of Neanderthals, however it is also found in archaic human species. The true function of the occipital bun has yet to be determined. Some investigations, however, have discovered probable evolutionary purposes. In one study, the occipital bun was linked to visual brain expansion. This is thought to be an adaptation to lower light levels observed in Europe's higher latitudes. This expanded visual cortex is also linked to larger eyes in Neanderthals. The occipital bun may help relieve stress on the neck muscles by countering the weight of the Neanderthal s bigger, more robust face. The jury is still out on Neanderthal brain power, but both Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens must have had the cognitive machinery needed for complex symbolic behavior like drawing pictures on cave walls, body paint and body decoration. The potential for symbolic expression and creativity is found in both Neanderthals and early modern humans, implying that it existed in our common ancestor roughly 700,000 years ago. Thus, it is entirely logical to consider that the null hypothesis the hypothesis that there is no significant difference between specified populations to be the co-evolution of brain, language, and symbolic thinking, and that the fundamentals of human cognition as we know it have been in place since at least 1.5 million years ago, when we see humans with large brains in the fossil record. Most scientists believe our ancestor, Homo sapiens sapiens, first arrived in East Africa between 190,000 and 160,000 years ago. Ethiopian fossils Herto and Omo provide evidence of this human progenitor. Following that, early Homo sapiens fossils from the archaeological sites of Skul and Kafson imply that they spread there between 80,000 and 120,000 years ago. Yet, evidence from fossils implies that humanity arrived in Europe only about 60,000 to 40,000 years ago. According to one argument, the existence of Neanderthals kept our species out of Europe and Western Eurasia. Experts also believe that contemporary humans were unprepared for Europe's harsh winter circumstances, until we invented more sophisticated weaponry and brains.